I would now like to welcome Joshua Coombs, Chief Geologist, and Paul Smith, Exploration Superintendent, from Azure Minerals to provide a case history of the discovery and definition of the Andover Lithium Project in the Pilbara. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thanks, Jenny. And uh, I'd like to firstly thank uh, the Azure Board and Paydirt for allowing us to um, present the exciting um, case history of the discovery and definition of the uh, Azure Lithium Project that's ongoing at the moment. Just our usual disclaimers and statements uh, available on our website. Uh, firstly, just like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land on which we operate and without the support of the Nalama people um, up in the Pilbara, uh, we wouldn't have been able to have the success that we've had and uh, the ongoing work uh, that we've got planned. Um, just a, a brief introduction about Azure and, and our history. Um, in uh, 2020, we acquired the Andover project, uh, took a 60% interest in that project with legendary prospector Mark Creasy. Um, but the main focus initially uh, for the project was on the nickel. Um, and between October 2020 and November 2022, thereabouts, we had two or three drill rigs uh, spinning throughout the whole time. Um, huge focus on understanding the nickel system, the geology, the mineralizing system. Um, and with that work, um, managed to actually discover two nickel deposits, so the Andover deposit, the numbers are there on the screen, and also the Ridgeline uh, deposit. Um, as I said, two or three rigs spinning that whole time, um, a pretty small team, very busy um, making discoveries. But what we're really here to talk about um, now is the Andover Lithium uh, project and the exploration that we've been undertaking over the last two years. Um, I'll take you through just briefly the work that we've done, so the, the initial outcrop, um, some of the desktop work that we did, um, some historical uh, minerals that were in the museum, um, and then uh, a brief uh, discussion around um, how we went about defining the project before we started drilling. So historically, um, there was uh, a few locations on the tenement where small scale mining was undertaken back in the 1950s and 60s um, by a Aboriginal rights campaigner, Don McLeod. Um, he did a lot of work. Um, there's some minor tantalum beryl produced. I think it was sent, beryl was sent to Japan. Um, and the initial desktop work that was done um, in the historical report sort of really downplayed the, the uh, prospectivity of the Andover area for, for lithium and in comparison to some of the uh, major deposits in the area like Pilgungura and Wajina, um, really basically said, no, nah, they're pretty small, um, not, much, not much interest there. Um, so they sat there um, from the 1960s. Um, here's, a, here's a map from some, another historical report. Uh, the black areas on the map uh, show the mapped pegmatites. Um, I think this report's from the 60s. Um, these are the two areas in red where the mining um, took place, so uh, on, our, on our Andover tenement. Uh, and this is our interpretation of the pegmatites after our first sort of few months of interpreting um, from uh, high quality, you know, uh, Sorry, uh, imagery. These are our target areas, uh, target areas one, two, and three. Um, and you can see there, um, there were some pegmatites located in target area three, but, but nothing really in target area one in the historical data. So we threw that away. Um, these are some of the old reports um, that we use. There's some old mining department reports from the 60s. Um, in those reports, it lists uh, some of the mineralization um, from those that historical working, which included uh, spodumene and a whole host of other minerals associated with LCT pegmatites. So fast forward to March 2022, a young geologist um, full of enthusiasm, quite intelligent, maybe presenting um, just after me, uh, found uh, an outcrop while doing some nickel exploration. Um, wasn't 100% sure um, whether it was spodumene, so we took some samples um, to take off to an expert to uh, help us out. Um, 
just, just after that, um, we started a small um, pegmatite sampling program which came out of our desktop studies um, and started getting um, some, some results uh, in the lithium um, from that work. Um, in May 2022, um, again following uh, our des desktop studies, uh, we went to this location uh, shown in the photo there, which was the old pit where Don McLeod was undertaking uh, the mining uh, and identified our, our first uh, positive uh, confirmed spodumene mineralization. Uh, in May 2022, um, again, we, we popped down to the museum and uh, thanks to Peter Downs at the museum for um, his support, he pulled all the samples out that were located five miles southeast of Roburn. Um, a whole host of minerals associated with LCT, so tantalite, cassiterite, beryl, even some emeralds. Um, and then there was some, uh, some spodumene as well in the bottom right corner there. Uh, in June, um, we engaged a, an industry expert, uh, Peter Spitalny. Um, first of all, we got him into the office, helped us go through um, working out our exploration strategy. We knew we had spodumene. Uh, we had such a huge area um, to cover. We'd mapped out over 800 pegmatites using uh, air photos. Uh, so we really needed to try and hone in, and he helped us uh, establish that methodology. Um, and yeah, uh, including assay results or which assay methods to use, um, sampling methodologies as well. So uh, we then got him to the field, took him around to um, some of the outcrops. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get him across to the, the mineralized uh, outcrop, um, but he was pretty positive about the, uh, the opportunity in front of us. Uh, there's one of the old barrel pits. Um, we also learned how to point with hammers, as you can see. There might be one, one or two more. They're a bit slow. All right, so in June uh, and through to January in 2022, um, with our passionate team of uh, young geos um, in the field, uh, who were really the driving force of the discovery in the early days, um, we started a major sampling program and, and implementing some of those techniques that Peter Spitalny um, got us onto, including monomineralic sampling, um, which helps us uh, determine the fertility of the pegmatite, um, whole rock geochemistry, um, and mapping the extent and the structure. And I just, I've included um, a couple of text messages from the team in the field. This is from uh, November, December in 2022, and it just shows the excitement um, and the enthusiasm of these guys in the field. Um, what I like probably most is the, uh, this is the comment in the bottom left on the left image there saying, we are defining a new lithium province, which um, I'm sure you all will agree is probably the case. And there's uh, Eleanor and, and Conrad, uh, a couple of our field geos, who did a lot of that early work. Uh, so in November, um, after a uh, site visit from a uh, potential investor, uh, we kept the helicopter and uh, flew around and got to some of the areas that um, were quite remote and off the tracks. Um, started really pulling out some of these pegmatites and, and that's, you know, that's when the scale of the project really came to light. Um, some pretty amazing rocks as well on the right here. Um, that's from one of our ASX releases in November. Um, showing our spodumene. I think a few people used it in their ASX releases as well um, when they were trying to pump up their projects. Um, okay, pre-drilling. Um, so fast forward to sort of November, February, um, we started looking um, at, a, at our data that we had in front of us um, and trying to figure out where we wanted to stick a drill rig and what our priorities were. Um, some of the questions we still had uh, were how wide were the pegmatites? Outcrops were sort of 20 to 30 metres wide. Um, what was the dip extent? Um, what's the strike length? So maximum strike of any of the pegmatites would have been four, five, six hundred metres thereabouts. Um, and were they mineralised at depth as well? Um, so fast forward to March uh, 2023. 
Um, we had a limited footprint uh, where we could drill for environmental and heritage reasons. Um, we started drilling some holes with one rig, drilling quite shallow angle holes to try and intersect the AP12 and AP11 pegmatite. And we did have some initial success with uh, you know, four and a half metres at 1.79%, 6.4 metres at 1.7%. Um, and I guess that confirmed um, a couple of our, our questions. So were they mineralised at depth? Um, so that was, that was pretty exciting. And um, you know, with, with our surface results and the initial drilling, we, we started getting pretty excited about this project. So in April, um, we managed to access a new area. We had our heritage clearance and, and POWs come through. And our first hole um, that really got, got the team excited was hole 206. We intersected 54 metres at 1.07%. Um, this is a section uh, that shows that hole. Just going one too far. Um, so yeah, this, this was a pretty exciting moment for us. Um, and, and shortly thereafter, and amazingly, only 12 months ago, um, we drilled ANDD 208, uh, which intersected 105 metres at 1.26%. And I think that was a moment that uh, the industry really woke up to what we had at Andover. Here's some of the amazing rocks that we got from that, from that hole. And I don't know whether it's here yet, but we're, we'll have a, a core tray in our booth later, which uh, some of the rocks from that hole and that's where it really took off. Is that right? <laughs> um, and and just, uh, just quickly, before I hand over to Josh, um, just wanted to point out that since that discovery hole, we've drilled over 130,000 metres uh, at Andover. Um, we've had three RC rigs and nine diamond rigs drilling um, during that time. And these are some of the results that have come out of that. And I'm going to hand over to Josh now, um, who's going to take us through the geology and the definition um, since discovery. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, so uh, as, as Paul mentioned, uh, that, that initial uh, 100 metre intercept in, in hole uh, 208 um, was drilled uh, less than a year ago, well, about a year ago uh, this week. Um, so I'm going to be taking you through how did we get from that initial discovery hole uh, to where we are in, in such a uh, small uh, space of time. Um, so you can see here, uh, a couple of sections uh, that we put out in February from, from AP11. Uh, um, and that pegmatite's been uh, uh, quite well defined um, as being an extraordinarily thick pegmatite up to 130, um, 130 metres true width. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be uh, essentially taking you through how we went from that initial intercept to where we are today uh, so rapidly. And probably the main uh, factor behind that is, is uh, uh, emphasis on, on understanding the geology to, to as high a level as possible. So that really began with um, uh, when in the early stages when we were rock chip sampling and, and got, uh, got Spatani in uh, to, to really start upskilling us. But we've really carried that on and, and uh, used uh, the cutting edge technologies um, and, and really started pushing the envelope of, of what was possible uh, to really get a good geological understanding of the system so that we could expedite the process. Um, so yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, we, we started uh, trying to get a handle on the system from, from the very uh, first rock chip sampling program, getting a really good suite of elements in our whole rock chemistry um, we used um, technologies such as uh, Libs core scanning to, to help us understand what our mineralisation looked like and, and what the structure of it was. Uh, there's a couple of examples on the right on the screen there um, of, of some Libs core scanning on our initial rock chip sampling, which really confirmed that, that the, uh, the lithium was in fact hosted in the spodumene. 
Um, we also used uh, a lot of remote sensing techniques like radiometrics, uh, magnetics, um, and, and detailed drone imagery to, to allow us to understand the extents of the system and collected a lot of structural data along the way so we could uh, evaluate the controls on the mineralization and, and try and be a, a bit predictive. We also developed some IP of our own, uh, collected uh, a lot of data when we did our initial uh, rock chip sampling. So we did estimates on the spodumene visually, uh, core photography, XRF, LIBS core scanning, and developed techniques to, to be able to predict lithium content in, in our samples prior to, to getting the assay results, which when the assay turnaround stretch out to to over two months, it was actually giving us a massive head start on, um, on our prospect evaluation. So we weren't having to wait for assay results. We could evaluate the, pro, uh, the, the prospects on the spot and be able to move on or, or bunker down if, if the results were good. We carried that through to the drilling as well. So when, when we uh, put our initial drill holes into various areas, we were able to, to evaluate the, the pegmatites immediately. Sorry, here is an example of uh, some of the, the predictions that we did on the rock chip samples. So on the left is the uh, existing data, and then on the right is um, some, some of the predictions that we had. And then when the assay results came in, basically confirmed that, that these prospects uh, contain some, some good mineralization. But we'd already sort of acted on that and incorporated those into our, into our assessments. So I'm going to take you briefly through uh, the geology of Andover and, and how the, how the mineralisation formed, which really underpins uh, uh, how we went about the exploration um, and, and sort of underpins why it's such a, such a good deposit. So I've got a, uh, a representation there of, of, a, of an initial uh, anatectic melt. It's, it's magma with anomalous lithium but not really ore grade, so the, the red dots there represent lithium. Uh, one of the characteristics of lithium is when you cool your magma chamber and start crystallising uh, cri rock forming minerals out, the, the lithium doesn't like to go in those minerals, so will concentrate in, in the residual magma. So as you migrate that along the system, you'll eventually increase the, the concentration of lithium in the magma. And what's so special about Andover is that we get such an extreme degree of fractionation that we end up producing a, a magma or a melt with 4.5% lithia, um, which then crystallizes out primary spodumene and quartz. So this, this fractionation occurs both in time and space, so within, within a fault network, uh, within a fraction network. And sort of the end result of this is uh, an ore body which is composed of both your, uh, your unmineralized portion in green uh, getting injected by this, this high grade 4.5% melt. So basically the entire uh, mineralized body at Andover is comprised of your, um, of your uh, uh, quartz spodumene melt uh, injecting into um, injecting into your unmineralized pegmatite, so that results in some really spectacular textures. You can see here uh, so, some examples, which is just pure quartz and spodumene. And then in the field, you can see uh, on the left there's a, an example of some uh, some of these um, quartz spodumene melts injecting into um, tears within the within the uh, pegmatite. You've got some examples. I'll see if this laser works. Uh, where you've got uh, a, a vein uh, of this quartz pegmatite melt injecting into your uh, unmineralized pegmatite, and then a couple more examples on the right. Um, uh, here's, here's some examples of some of the nice textures that we get. Um, uh, so we get these, these spodumene nucleation planes where you get the primary spodumene uh, basically growing from these surfaces and you can see there some nice examples of unambiguous primary spodumene uh, crystallising. 
Uh, on the right is an example of our LIBS core scanning. So the middle image is um, showing uh, the, the identified minerals present. So blue is spodumene and grey is quartz. So uh, that, that, that's uh, very typical of the, the, the type of mineralisation and the, the mineralogy that we get in these injections. And on the right is a lithium heat map showing the, the lithium reporting to the, to the spodumene. So this uh, basically allows um, the, the mineralization to form as, as quite a high quality uh, mineralization with 95% with of the lithium reporting to the spodumene. Um, and that spodumene, due to the extreme uh, extent of the fractionation, is, is, is quite low in iron, so 0.13%. Uh, and it also means that we, we don't have other deleterious elements present, uh, such as phosphorus. Um, the, the style of mineralisation that we get also um, allows for uh, a significant scale of mineralisation Due to the fact that it's an open system, uh, you, you can basically uh, increase the size of the system simply by uh, injecting more of your initial melt. Um, so basically that, that lends itself to, to be able to form uh, quite large uh, ore bodies. Um, so I've got a few examples here of our major, um, major uh, mineralised bodies, AP2, AP4 and AP11. I won't read all the strikes out, but we're, we've defined over um, three and a half kilometres of strike on, on those three bodies alone, um, with widths ranging from an average of 30, 35 in target area three to, to over 100 metres in uh, AP11. Um, we've drilled AP4 down to over 800 metres of dip extent. Our, our, our thorough understanding of the system allowed us to uh, come up with an, and publish a joint compliant exploration target um, less than two months after our initial assay results, uh, just due to, to having such a thorough understanding of the geology. Um, so you can see there we published our exploration target in, in August and we're on track to, to publish our uh, maiden mineral resource uh, expected in the middle of this year. So I wanted to just give uh, one example of, of how we uh, applied our understanding to, to really rapidly define uh, the mineralisation. Um, so I'm going to use target, target area three uh, as, as a prime example of that. So we only got into, um, got access and, and started drilling to target area three in, um, in October last year. So I've got a snapshot here of, of a few sections uh, and assay results we released uh, in November last year. So started drilling in uh, at the start of October um, and by the middle of November had five uh, sets of assay results showing um, some significant and continuous mineralisation in AP uh, 3 and 4. Uh, at that stage we defined 100 metres of strike. 450 metres of dip extent, and we had some visual, uh, visually observed mineralisation in, in pegmatites uh, 1, 2 and 5. Uh, fast forward uh, just, just five months, and uh, th this is a snapshot of, of where we were um, and the, on the 30th of March. Um, so you can see there in green is, is all the drill holes, drill hole traces with assay results and, and blue uh, were, were visual uh, estimates that we released. Um, but we've defined uh, more than 250 metres of strike extent, uh, sorry, uh, 2,100 metres of strike extent on AP4 and defined it down to 800 metres. Uh, and then AP2, we've actually pulled that out from uh, November when we had visual estimates on two holes to now, we've got um, 1,500 metres of strike, uh, ranging in thickness from 30 metres in the west to, to 10 metres in the east. Um, and we've also seen some significant mineralisation in uh, pegmatites one and five, though <laughs> due to the focus on, on AP four and two, uh, we haven't yet followed the, that mineralisation up. So in a, in a relative um, short period of time, we've managed to go from from no drilling um, there to within six months, um, 
having to find this much mineralisation and we're on track to, to put our maiden resource out uh, in the middle of this year. Um, but yeah, th thank you for, for listening to, to Paul and myself's story and uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, uh, we've got a booth here as Paul mentioned, so you can come and look at some of our awesome rocks and, and uh, pick our brains. Thank you. Thank you.